Welcome, everybody. I am privileged here to be with uh, the wonderful, wonderful pianist, John Kimura Parker, who's going to be with us uh, at our concerts. Welcome, Jackie. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Mitch. I'm thrilled. This is terrific. And we so look forward to your Rhapsody in Blue. I know it's a piece that's dear to your heart that you have played in all the big concert halls all over the world. And, and, and so I guess I should start by asking what you love about this piece. I know what I love about it, but uh, I'd like to hear what you love about it. Well, I, I always like a piece of music um, that steps outside of the box. So, I mean, if you think of this as a classical piano concerto, which Gershwin very much wanted uh, you to think of him as having uh, enough classical sort of credibility to write a piano yeah. concerto, um, this definitely steps out of the box. Um, uh, and, and then if you think of the world of jazz and you think of the world of Tin Pan Alley and Broadway and, and all of that, and you know something really great that I think has happened in music in the last 20 or 30 years is that there's a greater appreciation in the classical music world for um, the kind of skill and originality that it takes yeah. uh, you know, to write a great Broadway song, uh, to, to, to write a great pop song, right. um, and, and of course to play jazz. And, so here's a work that just combines all of those elements. There's the classical element, the, 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 the piano and orchestra. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it maybe, but it wasn't exactly an orchestra the way we know it. Um, yeah. And uh, the Tin Pan Alley uh, sort of feeling, the, the jazz feeling, uh, not to mention that Gershwin really knew how to write for the piano. And so right. that's a big part of the piece too. Yeah, 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 I love it because I love jazz. Um, it's, it's, it's my, my recreational music. Um, because it's, you know, it, it's hard for us. I love listening to classical music, but I, I'm, I can't turn off my analytic dimension, you know, uh, 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 obsession. Um, but I can listen to jazz in a more relaxed way. And, and so I've enjoyed listening to jazz and collaborating with a lot of jazz, uh, jazz musicians. And there's really very little of the jazz classical combination that works really well. This works fabulously well. And Gershwin was the master. Yeah, it works incredibly well. And um, uh, every component of this piece is brilliant. And um, uh, the creativity in, in the harmonic writing, in the rhythmic writing. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, the whole idea of Gershwin as pianist writing this piece, and I'm just going to switch to camera two here, when you have things like, you know, I mean, that is quintessential piano writing. I mean, you, you couldn't do that on any other instrument the same way. Right. And, and uh, it's fantastic. I mean, it's very satisfying to play. And he must have been, I mean, we know he was, but he must have been a terrific pianist. And, and that sense of command of the jazz resources on the keyboard just is really what the piece is about as much as anything else. I mean, it's also about New York City. It's also about Tin Pan Alley. It's also about him um, and, you know, his train ride and all of that. Um, yeah, actually, that was the train. That, 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 that was the, the, the clickety clack on the tracks as the train got started. And that's exactly what he said inspired him to write that, uh, that part of the piece. Yeah. And Gosh, you 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 know you certainly can hear it, and I I I love the fact that you play that a little slow at the beginning, and you you know I mean that is the train jogging his his mind, um, and, 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 and igniting this creative uh, uh, impulse that uh, that that results in this piece. It's also um, at, in the Grofet version. I think much better than the original version, actually, the full orchestra version. Um, it, it lays really well for, for the orchestra, but it is a spectacular piano piece. Yeah, it's a great piano piece. And, and, and the nice thing about these different versions that exist is that the piano part is, is not uh, in any important way different from, from one to the other. Yeah. Um, and of course, when you're talking about the Grofet uh, edition, that is the, the version orchestrated for full orchestra, which was something that uh, Gershwin just wasn't quite 
confident enough to do yet. I mean, he yeah. decided that he needed to be confident enough to do that eventually. And when he wrote the concerto in F, right. um, he, he did orchestrate it rather over enthusiastically, but he got into it and he totally, you know, but... Um, so and he pushes, and in that piece, he really pushes the orchestra. Yeah, it's true, and it's it's very difficult for everybody. Um, the thing, the thing with Rhapsody in Blue. So the original version for uh, for the Paul Whiteman orchestra, not really a jazz band exactly, a kind some kind of a mix between orchestra and jazz, which in a way fits the piece that it's a mix between classical and jazz, um, and you know, pr prominently featuring the banjo, which is fun. Um, it happens that I've just given the U.S. premiere of a completely different version. I uh, just played it uh, in Atlanta um, w uh, for piano and brass band. Oh, really? Uh, wow. Basically, well, I should say big band, piano and big band. Um, uh -huh. And so it's, it's just uh, saxophones, trumpets, trombones, uh, drums and bass. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a very flexible piece that way. And again, the piano part is, is so uh, uh, integral to the whole piece and so yeah. important that that doesn't change. Um, so in, the, uh, in, in that uh, uh, jazz band version, does it still start with the uh, clarinet schmear? No, it starts with a trumpet schmear because Jens Lindemann is playing and he can actually do it on the trumpet. <laughs> He's got, wow. he, 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 got, he had a custom blue piccolo trumpet made um, and, and does that. So, oh, how fantastic. Yeah, that's wow. something we should, we should mention to, um, uh, to everybody who's watching is, is that the, the clarinet glissando was actually the clarinetist's idea. And I just love that, you know, I mean, it was, it was a joke in the rehearsal that in, instead of doing something that I think would have sounded like Uh, uh, in, instead, the, the clarinetist actually swooped up the pitch. All the well, way here, let's, it, let's, let's listen to it just for a second so Absolutely. people get it. And that sense of humor is all the way through that solo. Yeah, it, it, it is. And, and the blues element of it, the uh, brilliant use of triplets um, uh, th th actually throughout the whole piece um, is, is yeah. you know, one of the things that makes it just so great. Yeah. And, and then, you know, it kind of swings by itself. I mean, this question of a symphony orchestra swinging. Um, I, I used to be principal pops conductor of various orchestras and, and getting an orchestra to swing um, to, to interpret black notes on on white paper in in a way that really swings doesn't always work very well but in this piece it, it you can almost play it exactly as it's written with just a little bit of looseness and uh, and it really does come together yeah it does i mean i for 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 me the what's really great about the piano part is you know it has everything from the kind of uh, 16th note arpeggiated fast runs that you would associate with, you know, any yeah. virtuoso piano concerto, you know, this kind of stuff, right? I mean... I mean, that's just brilliantly fun to play. And, yeah. um, and very well and very effectively written for the piano. But, right. you know, I also get to do this. Just to be able to, to take, you know, the lyrical sense of the piano and, and pedaling and warm sound and all that. That's all that's all in the piece, too. I yeah, mean, it's just a, a total home run for Gershwin, I think. Yeah, that's that is rhapsodic. That is a rhapsody, what you just played. Yeah. And and it's just so full of this honest Gershwin heartfelt stuff. Yeah. It oh, just it, 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 it's amazing. It, and, you know, here we are, we are approaching the centenary of this piece, which is really hard right. for me to believe. Right. Because you know, it was premiered in, in uh, the winter of 1924. I mean, that, that's almost 100 years ago. And um, I, I recently looked at a list of the, the celebrity musicians who were at that concert, and it mm. is the weirdest combination of people. Like, like John Philip Sousa, um, 
and uh, let's see, who, who else? Uh, Stravinsky, was that that? Yeah, I think I had read that, right. Just the two of those in one room together makes no sense <laughs> yeah. at all. And Fritz Chrysler, and you know, I mean, it, it um, and the concert was called An Experiment in Modern Music, and, and right. you know, it, was a, it was a very successful experiment. <laughs> Yeah, and it had some other pretty interesting pieces on that program as well. But this is the one that just stays with us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, do you find when you do it in different ways that you're you're approaching the the pianistic part of it in, 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 uh, differently in any way? Occasionally, I think some um, there. I, I noticed playing it with big band that there were some passages that we played very fast because it kind of suited the sort of agile, uh, you know, jazz age style of, and, mm -hmm. and of course a much smaller group, you can do those kinds of things. Right. Um, and when you're playing a full, uh, you know, fully fleshed out orchestral version, you might want to enjoy some of that orchestral sound and maybe not, not push it too much. But other than that, not really. I mean, I, I just want the piece to be um, incredibly engaging uh, and to have that, jazz age sensibility as you know part of part of what makes it a brilliant piece um yeah but at the same token you know there are moments where i'm accompanying the orchestra clearly you've got the good stuff in the orchestra and, and i'm just you know playing some background you know something like that right. and, uh there are conversations you know where the violins are doing and i come in you know, and, and all that kind of back and forth. So there's so many different kinds of things that happen in that piece. And that's, that's, just, that's what makes it glorious for me. Yeah. And for a piece that we know so well, and that is so much in our audience's ears, it is, for me, every time I do it, still incredibly fresh. Yeah. What is it about that? You know, there are, there are pieces that are great pieces that, um, we always love performing and that are always renewing, but this one always feels new. Yeah, I think um, if, you're, if you're a uh, symphony concert goer, uh, for example, um, you're a core audience, right? Um, and you hear the orchestra used in certain kinds of ways. And even in more contemporary music, you will hear the orchestra used in certain kind of ways. You might hear the percussion section used in a way you'd never heard right. before or something. Sure. But I find it with, with Gershwin, um, and this is part of partly his musical writing and how it happened that Faraday Grofe understood it to be orchestrated. Yeah. Um, and, and then you hear more of the same when Gershwin orchestrates himself um, later on. Right. Is the uh, instruments are used in ways that you're not expecting, um, and uh, there's a rhythmic aspect to even when you're playing something melodic, that there's a rhythmic aspect to what's happening that's really compelling, and uh, yeah. it's just a little bit different. And at the by the same tone, you know, I, I, you just don't expect to hear exactly that from a symphony orchestra, and that's what makes it, I think, fresh. You know, it's yeah. just and and. The, the genius of it is that it does bear repeated listenings and it always comes out sounding somehow a little different. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's part of the, the joy for me because I, I love jazz so much and as many different performances with jazz artists as, as, as we've done, where that's been a, a major theme of, of, um, of our orchestra the last 15 or 20 years, um, it, never quite works as well as Gershwin did it. Whether it's American in Paris or uh, the, the, the concerto, the piano concerto, or, or the Porgy and Bess symphonic picture with, uh, again, orchestrated by Robert Russell Bennett, another you know, great, great orchestrator. Those pieces just shine every time. And uh, the, the, there's a lot of disappointment in trying to meld classical symphonies with, with jazz, never, never disappointing in this piece. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think it's it's a it's it's tricky to to combine them. I I play jazz a little bit as a hobby, um, not especially well, but I just sort of really love doing it. And um, and I've played in a, a well, you can't really call it a rock band exactly, but it's I play in a group uh, called Off the Score uh, that I founded with uh, the great rock drummer Stuart Copeland, who was the oh yeah, the wow, band. terrific, and, sure. Um, <clears throat> Stuart was writing a new composition for us and he came up to me 
and he'd written something really complicated for the piano. And he said, Jackie, is this going to be okay or is this totally unrealistic? Um, and I looked at it and I said, Stuart, that's going to be fine. This is the part I'm worried about. And I pointed to the page that said, you know, 32 bars, improv. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, that's the part I'm worried about. And, and so, you know, it's a completely, completely different mentality. And uh, I, I, I love working with uh, jazz musicians and just their approach to music, um, both in jazz and rock and roll, is there, there's... Um, you can take what you're doing extremely seriously, but there is a sense of fun and adventure about it, which is really important. And in classical music, where we have the whole gamut of possible emotions that we can express, I think greater than any other musical form, um, and that, that can include music that's incredibly tragic, and it, of course, should be that way. Um, but um, it's possible to be too serious sometimes, you know? And I think what's great about Gershwin is that he does encourage you to, um, you know, go out on the town and have a good time. And, and that comes out in the music. And next week at our concerts, we will have a good time. Oh, we will I be... I, I can't wait. <laughs> me too. Um, I, I have great admiration for your performance of this piece, and I can't wait to recreate it together. Uh, for our audience, these are concerts on the um, 29th and 30th of October. Um, at uh, San Mateo Performing Arts Center and Heritage Theater in Campbell. And we are so pleased and honored to be presenting John Kimura Parker playing Rhapsody in Blue. Thank you for this look into this wonderful music. Can't wait to do this with you. And we look forward to welcoming our audience back into our concert hall for the first time for this wonderful occasion. Well, that is very special. And I can tell you that I've played a number of concerts in the last couple of months where people were coming to concerts for the first time yeah. um, and even observing very strict mask protocols and everything else just ecstatic to be to be hearing live music and and to sort of notice what they'd been missing um, even though um, a lot of organizations have done various different kinds of virtual projects and to, right. to keep people engaged um, the experience of, of hearing music live again is um, really, really special. It's what we live for, and it's it's what, well, what we can't wait to experience next week. Thank you for this lovely conversation, and can't wait to make music next week, Rhapsody in Blue for the Peninsula Symphony. Thanks so much, Jackie. Thank you, Mitch. See you there. You take care. <laughs>